Apollo 10 launched on May 18, 1969 at 4.49 p.m. UTC from Launch Complex 39B at Kennedy Space Center aboard a Saturn V rocket. This was the only Saturn V launch from 39B, as Apollo 11 was already being prepared for 39A. The mission's goal was to carry both the Apollo Command and Service Module and the Lunar Module to the Moon, testing everything except for the landing. The Lunar Module would do the Descent Orbit Insertion Burn, which would bring it to the 50,000 foot or 15 kilometer altitude for the start of power descent, but would not actually start the descent. Instead, aborting by casting off the Descent Module and heading back to a higher orbit with the Ascent Module to rendezvous with the Command Module. In a way, after Apollo 8 and Apollo 9, this mission was far less ambitious and essentially confirming what those missions concluded, that aside from testing the actual landing, the hardware was ready to go. The crew for this mission was Commander Tom Stafford, Command Module Pilot John Young, and Lunar Module Pilot Gene Cernan. None were space rookies, with Stafford and Young on their third missions and Cernan on his second. Except for this mission and Apollo 11, all other Apollo missions had at least one space rookie. Taking full advantage of NASA relenting and allowing crew to name their spacecraft or at least assigning call signs to their spacecraft, they decided the call signs for the command module and lunar module would be Charlie Brown and Snoopy respectively. NASA would subsequently try to insist that crews pick less amusing names, but the next time John Young was up, it was on Apollo 16 and he and his crew managed to get Casper in for the command module, a reference to Casper the Friendly Ghost. Launch, translunar injection, and the transposition and docking all went without incident, and the crew was the first to transmit a live color TV broadcast from space. After reaching lunar orbit, Young stayed in the command module while Stafford and Cernan made their relatively brief excursion in the lunar module. They conducted the 27 second burn to get into an initial descent orbit, bringing their periapsis to 15 kilometers. That low point in their orbit was where Apollo 11 would conduct its landing burn. On this mission, the Ascent Module only had part of its propellant, so if they had tried to land, they would not have had enough to return to the Command Module. There was apparently serious concern that they would try to land on the moon without having permission to do so. They took a look at the landing site before dumping the Descent Stage and returning to the Command Module with the Ascent Stage. However, they experienced an unexpected roll after separating from the descent stage with Stafford and Cernan caught cursing as a result, and those expletives being broadcast live around the world. Cernan recalled a roll that was nearly unrecoverable, but the flight recording did not show as serious a deviation. Any deviation was still potentially a problem that needed to be resolved before Apollo 11 though. Fortunately, it turned out that the roll was due to the crew entering duplicate commands into the computer and this was avoided in subsequent missions and did not delay Apollo 11. NASA management was also apparently in a forgiving mood, as Cernan went on to command Apollo 17, the last mission to land on the moon, and Stafford commanded the Apollo Soyuz test project. After rendezvousing with Charlie Brown and transferring over to the command module, the crew separated the empty lunar module Snoopy. Snoopy was then commanded to fire its engine, depleting its fuel and sending it on escape so that it would end up in orbit around the sun. The descent module eventually crashed into the moon due to the unevenness of lunar gravity. Charlie Brown left lunar orbit on May 24th and the crew splashed down on May 26th at 4.52 p.m. UTC. Apollo 8 had already tested the lunar transfer, the use of the service propulsion system around the moon, and generally everything that the command module would need to do on its own during the mission. Apollo 9 verified the systems of the lunar module except for the landing, albeit around the Earth. So this rehearsal for the Apollo 11 landing didn't introduce many new elements. NASA was confident enough that it already had Apollo 11 ready to go. If something serious had gone wrong with Apollo 10, of course, plans would change. Fortunately, ascent module spinning aside, serious problems did not occur, and Apollo 11 would launch within a mere two months. With that, thank you for watching this mission profile of Apollo 10.